Today we're going to be going over the easiest method for the Gigaminx. The Gigaminx is really a combination of two puzzles, because while it has the same color scheme in 12 sides of the Megaminx, it is five pieces across, which means that we're also going to have to use five by five strategies. If you don't know how to solve either of these cubes, I have easy tutorials and you can find those on my channel. Essentially what we're going to do today is we're going to use the reduction method to reduce this into a Megaminx. Before we scramble this, let's go over some different types of pieces. So on each side, there's a large pentagon. This will dictate what color each side will be once we scramble it up. And there are also 10 other center pieces here. There are edge center pieces, which are shaped like a trapezoid, and corner center pieces, which are shaped like a rhombus. Now for the edges, there are the two normal shaped edges, and then this triangular one is still technically an edge. Then lastly, of course, the only tricolor pieces are the corners. Now that we have scrambled it up, our first step will be to get to the full white center. We will simply just find pieces around the cube and move them into place. I've found that the best way to do this is by starting with one edge, then corner edge, corner edge, corner edge, and lastly, this bar of three in the bottom. You're going to continue this method to get every center around the cube that borders this white center. Although you will have to be mindful that now, when you start putting pieces in, you will then have to clear a path and then fix previous centers that you've already built. After you finish your first six centers, you'll then turn the cube over and work on your last six. I would suggest starting with one and then moving around in a circle so that your last three are next to each other. Otherwise, you might end up with one here and one here, and then you'll have to keep looking up and down for the pieces. The good thing about having these six centers done is because now you won't have to look down for any other center pieces. All of them should be within your eyesight. For the last two centers, you'll still use the same method. So I have one dot here, then I'll move a bar of two in, then I'll move another bar of two in, and then you might have to move around pieces a little bit. And then here, then I'm going to try to make my bar onto the green face so that I have a really easy way of putting it in. And then last slice, I made the bar here, and now I'm slicing it in. And now all of your centers are finished. Now we will move to edge pairing. Edge pairing on a Gigaminx will be similar, but not identical to a 5x5. Five five. On the 5x5, five five, we could slice the top, the bottom, or even the middle layer to start making pairs. However, on a Gigaminx here, looking at the white and green pieces, we actually wouldn't be able to move this over if it's on the bottom. So what we would have to do is we would have to set it up in such a way that we can use this top layer to then move the pieces together. One thing that I've learned to speed up edge pairing is this. So I'm looking at green and white, and then I also have a green and white here that I put onto the top layer. So I slice these two together, and then I'm going to do the edge flipping algorithm. Or you could just take it out and then put it in upside down. Then I will look for on the top layer my green and white piece, which I'll insert in, and then when I slice back, all three pieces will be put together. Now technically that's enough information right there. You could just go around the cube, solving edges piece by piece, and then solve it like a Megaminx. However, you're going to learn that that's incredibly time-consuming, because you have to keep turning this 12-sided puzzle over and over looking for pieces, and your last two pieces could even be on opposite sides of the cube. So for the rest of the video, I'm going to show you a method that I've created that solves the Megaminx stages and pairs edges at the same time. Your first step will be to build the five cross edges. Then you will use the outer layers to move them into their correct positions. The next five edges that you're going to do are the ones that make up your F2L pairs. Now you'll also put the corners in just so that you won't have to do that step at the end. Once again, the point of this is that you won't ever have to look down at the bottom for pieces. Now all of them will be around here. Also at this point, you will only use this layer to pair up F2L pairs along these positions. Your next step will be to pair the 10 edges that make up this next layer, and you will also put the corner piece that connects both edges. Then, you will match up these last layer pairs and their corners, but make sure to leave two slots here. Then you will use these two slots to do the rest of the edges. This includes all of the gray edges. 
for the last two edges, you should always be able to do both of them by using the edge flipping algorithm. I've done quite a few solves now and I haven't run into any other edge parodies, but let me know in the comment section if you discover any. At this point, the cube is fully reducted, so you can just use whatever Megaminx last layer methods that you've already learned. Once again, if you don't know how to solve the Megaminx, you can view a tutorial on my page. And there you have it. That's the easiest solution to the Gigaminx. Obviously, you won't be speed solving this, but it's still a fun puzzle to learn. I hope this video was helpful to you, and for the future, good luck. Thank <laughs> you.